Hi everyone, how are you doing? Yes, I'm wearing my glasses, but even though that I had thought I was gonna do a video on how to draw something cool, um, I think I'm gonna leave that for another time and I'm going to just talk about something for a change. I've done a bunch of reviews lately and uh, I think I wanna just chat. And plus, if you can see who's staring at you right now, I'm wearing my Yoda shirt and whenever Yoda's telling me to do or do not, there is no try, it usually puts me in the mood for a little talk about Zen and art. <laughs> um, lately, in doing this, uh, whatever you want to call this, this channel, uh, these videos, it's come to my attention two things. Number one, that people are so hard on themselves. And secondly, that we cling to a lot of things. And in terms of both Zen and art, I think that those are not useful. And here's why. And I wrote this down so I wouldn't get it messed up. In Zen, there are what are called the um, eight worldly conditions. They're basically things that we attach to or things that we have aversions to. And they basically, they yoke us to this cycle of uh, suffering, okay? And those, they kind of, they, they're balanced out here. So the first is happiness and suffering. The second is fame and insignificance. The next one is praise and blame. And the last one is gain and loss. Now, what the takeaway with that is, is we cling to things in this life. We cling to our views, we cling to this view of ourself, we cling to our baggage, we cling to so much. And none of that is really being gentle with ourselves. And worse, it's not gentle to this planet. And we, I think most of us can acknowledge what not being gentle to our planet does. In Zen, what we try to do, successfully or unsuccessfully, it doesn't really matter, is we try not to get too wound up in what is generally called duality. It's this view that, uh, how could I explain it easily? That beauty is better than ugliness, that new is better than old, that youth is better than old age, that being famous is better than being insignificant, that, you know, the sunny days are better than the rainy days, and that my art is better than your art or the opposite. None of that's useful. It's just as useful as someone in grade school told you that your stick figure that you drew <laughs> was ridiculous or that your nose is too big or that um, your curly hair isn't nice and you should have straight hair. I don't know, right? Um, none of that's useful. What we need to do in our lives is learn to let go of all of that. And yes, I know it is easier said than done, but we have to try. What I always say is we need to learn to let go and we need to be kind. We need to be kind to ourselves. We need to be kind to our planet. We need to be kind to all the people around us. We even need to be kind to those people that do us wrong. Now, that doesn't mean you set yourself up for more, you know, nasty behavior from people. It just means that you learn to cultivate compassion for, for things and you learn to see everything that happens as a good lesson in this life. And sometimes the people that the people in the things that irk us the most are those things that we need the most because they teach us something. 
So maybe someone said that your art wasn't so good at some point, and instead of believing that, you take that as a catalyst to really dive in and love your art and love what you do and love the process and love the feeling of it. And I think that's good. Now, of course, some of you are going to be like, but if you love it, isn't that kind of an intoxication? Isn't that you having dualism? Yeah, of course it is. What I look at it as is I do art. You see what I mean? So it's not a matter of me judging my art. In fact, what I love to do is do my art every day and then I don't look at it. And then maybe I come back to it tomorrow. And more often than not, when I do that and I look at it, even if that day when I did it, I was like, eh, I don't know. Usually when I look at it the next day or the day after or whenever, I'm usually kind of blown away. Because for me, what I really try to strive to is to enjoy this life and enjoy the little things, enjoy the imperfections. My hair stands up. <laughs> Believe me, there's been some days where I've been like, man, look at George Clooney. I wish I had hair like George Clooney. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's perfection. He wakes up and I bet you he looks like that. No, probably not. He probably looks more like his hair is sticking up in the air too. He probably has people that sit there mashing his hair that stands up just as much as mine. But I don't judge it. And in fact, I'm 52 years old now. The fact that I got a full, basically full head of hair, even though it stands up and says hello, I love it. For years I shaved my head. And I love that. This beard and hair thing, it's actually pretty relatively new for me. And I love it. Now, that's not judging it. You know, if tomorrow I wake up and I look in the mirror and I don't, I can't grow a beard for some reason and my hair is all gone, well, you know what? I, I'll love that too. I try not to get too down deep into the, the weeds of these things. And I think that's the best way to live a truly happy life. Because you know what? Here is the thing. And it's actually a happy thing. Our lives are short. Even if you live to be 120 years old, believe me, that 120 years is nothing still. Everyone is going to pass at some time. What's the most important thing is to take that time that you have here and now and spread love. To love the life that you have. To be happy and peaceful that's probably more important, in this moment. To not bear grudges, to judge less, to be more compassionate, and to be a light in the darkness. And then, if your art is all about that, can you imagine the things that will change in your life? And I can tell you that when you create art, with the view that I don't care if I'm making art with mud or with finger paint or with who knows what else, that all that actually matters is that creative process, that you are doing this, that you're in that moment, that you're letting go, that you're just creating. And it doesn't matter what it looks like in the end. It truly doesn't. If the only thing that mattered about art was using, you know, this type of paint or this type of clay or this type of whatever for reasons and on and on and on. Imagine the sad world we'd live in. If Imagine if everybody followed exactly the way that, you know, the textbook says that you need, you must draw an apple like this. You must draw a human face like this. You can only use this pencil. I wouldn't do art, to be honest with you, if that was the case. But I do. I am someone who his entire life has, for whatever reason, loved art, loved creating things. And yeah, there's been times where I've 
drifted away and, you know, tried this and tried that and did other things. But I love it. So, I would caution you to try to see life with new eyes. Instead of buying the most expensive paint, try the cheapest paint. If someone tells you that this paint is no good, use it and find out for yourself. If someone tells you that, you know, your art's not good, do more of it. Do more of it, not to spite them, but so that you can learn more, so that you can feel more, so that you can help spread more light in this world yourself. So there you go. That's what I'm thinking about right now. What do you think? What matters? Does that new iPhone matter? Or is the iPhone you have pretty darn good? You know, that's kind of where I am in this life. I don't think that we necessarily need more. I don't think that we've always been the way that we are now. There was a time when all of our ancestors used to believe that the important thing was a word, enough. I have had enough. I have enough food to feed my family. I have enough paint to paint this painting. Oh, that's the mailman. <laughs> my dogs love the mailman, let me tell you. Not really. Now the bird's barking. The dogs are barking. <laughs> you gotta love it. I live in a zoo. Not really. It feels like that sometimes. But our ancestors used to actually, their motivation was that, that I have enough. And I think that we can learn something from that. We don't need more. Right? We don't, don't need the shiniest toys. Right? And sometimes we need to sit back and, you know, take a look at the lemon tree and enjoy what it looks like right now. Last week, the flowers were brand new and beautiful, and this week, they're starting to fall off. And that in, in, in and of itself is a beautiful thing too. And really, that's what this life is about. So, what I would say is let's all rejoice in this life we have and appreciate all of the setbacks, all of the failure, all of the trying times, all of the experimentation, and really try to make our art about this life and make our art about pushing past duality, good and bad, happy and sad. And let's just find peace in our lives, peace in our art, and let's make this world a better place as a result. So there you go. That's all I have for you today. I hope you're doing well. Say hi in the comments. And if I haven't said it, I'll say it now. <laughs> Please like this video and subscribe. And if you already have, thank you so much for tuning in. When I looked today at how many subscribers I've got, I was absolutely blown away. I did not start this channel thinking that I would actually have anybody who is tuning into these. I think I was doing it more for me and uh, my own self-reflection on my art and my life and my view of things. But next time I have these glasses on, we're going to do some art. But until then, take care of yourself. <laughs>